There are some really hard things to do in Stardew Valley. Here is my top 10 hardest things to do in Stardew Valley list. Enjoy! Completing the community center is crucial to progressing through Stardew Valley. We all have to do it eventually, and completing it within the first year is a very common goal. But sometimes it is completely out of our control. Sometimes we are literally unable to complete the community center because of one horrible little demon crop, red cabbage. The most reliable way to get red cabbage is through the traveling cart that comes by both on Fridays and Sundays. If you didn't click the guaranteed button in the options, the red cabbage may or may not be sold. It is completely up to RNG and it's frustrating. After finding 100 golden walnuts, you will get to do these great key special order requests. The danger in the deep quest is one of my favorites. It will turn the regular mines into a more dangerous, treacherous version. It's really fun, but it's not all that difficult. Well, there is one extremely difficult aspect of this quest, squids. And no, I don't mean the squids that you can catch while fishing. I mean floating magical squid monsters that have the most unpredictable annoying attack patterns. If you don't have the best weapons and rings, these guys will be extremely annoying. These squids might just be my least favorite enemies in the game. At least after reaching floor 40, we will never see them again. Floor 10 in the volcano is definitely my favorite floor in the entire volcano. For obvious reasons, it's the forge. The forge is just great. It allows us to add extremely helpful bonuses to all of our tools, but it can also create new overpowered weapons that can further be enhanced and enchanted. But there is one problem, cinder shards. Cinder shards are required for every single step of the forge, and we need a ton of this stuff. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, there is no real reliable way to farm for these suckers. The best we can do is wear a burglar ring and hunt down some magma sprites. But there are only so many enemies in the volcano as they do not respawn when you leave and re-enter the volcano. Yeah, it's going to take you quite a few runs in the volcano before you get enough cinder shards to satisfy your power hunger. Fishing is always hard in the early game, until you get the hang of it and it becomes your favorite feature in the game. Then you meet the legendary fish. If you have been playing for as long as me, they are actually not that difficult to catch with the right tools. But they are still really difficult. But there is something even more difficult than that. Something that might be considered impossible for some of the legendary fish. Getting a perfect catch on a legendary fish. But I did it. I used some buffed up seafoam pudding, the cork bobber fishing tackle, and caught the radioactive carp with a perfect catch. I will be honest, it took a bunch of tries and a bunch of luck, but I did it. Back to those awesome fun key special order requests. Most of them are fun. Some of them are tedious, but there are two challenges that are so difficult that I usually skip them. First, we have the Keys Hungry quest. This quest will task you with reaching floor 100 in the Skull Cavern within a single run. But you are not allowed to eat any food. So if you get ganged up on by a bunch of rowdy serpents and lose a bunch of health, well, good luck I guess. The vampirism enchant and some vampire rings will help but it's still tough. Then we have the Junimo Kart challenge. Get 50,000 points on Junimo Kart Endless. I have no words for this. It's just impossible. Yes, we can all agree that ancient fruit is an awesome profitable stress-free crop. It regrows every 7 days, it produces highly valuable crops and if you plant them in your greenhouse or on ginger island, they are literally no maintenance. However, to reach that point, you will need to work really hard to get enough seeds. As you know, there is no way to buy these seeds. The only way to get more seeds is by sacrificing an ancient fruit by placing it into a seed maker and getting more. But the crop takes 28 days to grow, so it will take forever to get enough seeds to fill up your entire ginger island farm. It's frustrating, but 
it is worth it. Making money in Stardew Valley is not that hard. Once you understand the game, you can easily make enough money to buy all of those crazy expensive items. But do you know what is hard? Making absolutely ridiculous amounts of money. Like 1 billion gold for example. Making 1 billion gold in Stardew Valley was the hardest thing I ever did. And I do not recommend it to anyone. To do this, you will need to spend the entire day working on both of your farms. There is no time to sleep early or make friends or even fish. All you will be doing is cycling crops into gigs and collecting diamonds from crystallariums. It was so fun. But what do you do with all of your millions of gold after you have made it? You bought a return scepter, a golden clock, and all of the warp obelisks. Now what? What else can you spend your fortune on? I even tried buying 100 statues of endless fortune, but it hardly even made a dent. Spending your money is strangely the hardest thing to do in Stardew Valley. I know you don't go the Jojo route, but the Jojo route does have one major advantage. You can buy an Autopeta. Autopetas will pet your animals for you. And if you decide to pet them while having an Autopeta, your animals will love you faster. Plus, it enables lazy players like myself. But if you do not go the Jojo route, you cannot buy one of these. Instead, the only way to get one of these is by getting lucky in the Skull Cavern in a treasure chest. There is a measly 4% of getting one of these in a treasure chest you open. And those treasure chests can be rare. Good luck on your very tedious and much needed auto peta hunting. Ostriches. They are just great, right? You can just sell them for profit, turn their children into mayonnaise, and most importantly, they make this sound. But getting these guys is hard. Mostly because to learn the recipe to craft an ostrich egg incubated, you will need to find every fossil for Professor Snail. Most of these are really easy to find, except one, the snake vertebrae. If you have played on the 1.5 update, you know the pain that this fossil can cause. You can only find it by hoeing artifact spots around your ginger island farm. And it actually took me an entire in-game year to get two of them. That's right, you need two of these to get the ostrich. This is the most debated thing in Stardew Valley. The cave, fruit bat cave or mushroom cave, which will you choose? That is the hardest decision in the entire game and you have to make it really early into your playthrough. Both are good, which will you choose? It's impossible to decide, but you must. Finding pearls is also really difficult, or is it? Check out this video to get an infinite amount of pearls really easily. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. I will see you in the next video.